Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we're going to talk about the new Luminar AI. Let's jump in right now with, without wasting any time. Right, so first of all, this is how the interface look like. Pretty basic, straightforward, right? Now, on top, you got plus button to add photos. Then you have catalog, template, edit, export. And then you got the medium, like, that's basically whether or not you want your thumbnails big or small you got a question mark in case if you want to have any answers then you have got the catalog side which is pretty much similar to the last one so i'm not going to get into the detail i'm just going to show you exactly how this works now first of all plus so you have two options add folder with images edit single image so i'm going to add a folder here and then i've got a folder ready so i'm going to select folder and I got a bunch of photos. So I'm going to edit two photos. One, a portrait. Second, a landscape, but a complicated one. Portrait, just to see if the one-click solutions are good enough or no. Two, um, the, this photo here, it's complicated because you got a blue sky, which is pretty basic. However, you can see that the, it's not really a plain blue sky. You got the blue sky through the tree. So it is very complicated for artificial intelligence to figure out. So let's see if it works or not. First of all, I'm going to start with my amazing photograph. All right. So you got some photograph ready. So one thing I could not find out when I did a little bit of trial, which is I don't know how to click reset button. So that that's the part that I'm kind of confused. Maybe it's somewhere here, but I don't know where is it. And second thing is that there are no histogram for example if i click edit i still don't have any don't have any kind of histogram here so later i found out that if you click right click on a photograph then it has a button says show histograms so if i do so you got like a tiniest histogram in the mankind history right there i am guessing that not important for many but a guy like me i like to have my histogram always available anyway now in order to edit portrait you have either all the templates so you can use the templates and see if it's working but if you want to do manual edit you can go to the edit then go to the smiley face and then play with them so first of all you got a face because it's not a body it's just a headshot so i'm going to stick with face first then see what it does first of all if you go all the way up or down it add a little bit of glow the second one is the same face basically squish the face if it's let's say you took a photo with wide angle lens sometimes it gets way too distorted so you can fix it with the same face now eyes what it does uh, you got many 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 options but i'm gonna try that and see what it works so you got a blue eye holly crap I look weird, man. Oh boy. Oh, uh, this is weird. Okay, okay. I'm gonna move on to the brown. Uh, I s uh, yeah, I mean, not a big fan. Let's say, let's say not a big fan. Every time it's changing my eye color, I get uh, it's giving me almost a mini heart attack. Now you got gray. <laughs> you know, if you like it, that's up to you. But yeah, I'm not going to probably ever use it ever again. You got a cat. What is this thing? Who am I? I don't know myself anymore. Anyway, mint. And finally, oh, oh, I cannot wait to see it. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the original because this is way too weird for me, man. Right, okay, mouth. So lip saturation, let's see. It detect your lips somehow and make it saturated, I believe. So let's see, before and after. And if I go back and the lip redness, let's see. <laughs> I'm sorry, this tutorial is supposed to be serious, but I got a, this is my photo, so I get to laugh, all right? Shut up. Uh, lip darkening. And I don't have any tooth, so I'm not gonna try the tooth whitening. You know what, let's reset the whole thing. And skin, let's see what it does. So. So it adds a little bit of glow on the skin because sometimes too sharp lenses can bring all the ugly details of your skin. So that's good. Shine removal. So let's say you have a photo with a little bit of shine, then it get rid of it. 
and skin defect removal. So if I click that one, what happens? Oh, nothing. I don't see any changes. So, well, let's move on. I'm not going to try the body artificial intelligence because it's, I'm guessing it's the whole body. But yeah, it's for the whole body. Then high key. So if I add, oh, it adds a bit of different kind of brightness. So you got the idea though. Um, so we're going to move on to the photo, like landscape photo to see how it works with the sky displacement. Basically, this is what you're paying money for. So we're going to jump straight to the sky. First of all, everything else remains exactly the same as the last time. There's no big changes. So we got, let's say essential, you got a easy composition, erase, light, enhance, structure, color, black and white, detail, denoise, landscape, and vignette. If you are familiar with Luminar 4, you have everything exactly the same. And if you have the Pro one, so you got optics, super contrast, color harmony, dodge and burn, and clone and stem. Again, I have, I don't see any changes from the last one. However, the sky replacement, let's see how does it work. So if I select a sky, for example, and then change it to a dramatic sunset, as you can clearly see, it can go through, detect all the sky, even in the little here, like that. You can clearly see that it passes through. If you want to see more, I'm going to change it to galaxy, for example. You can clearly see that it changed, it did a very good job. So yeah, I mean, I'm not very surprised with that. Even Luminar 4 could do the same one. If you are, if you're not familiar with Luminar 4, if you're the first time Luminar user, you should go and check out my previous uh, video of Luminar 4 and you will find most of the things are same. Now, augmented sky, for example. So if I add cloud, you can add cloud here, pretty believable or lightning, for example. Uh, I don't see my lightning. Where is it? Oh, there you go. There, there you go. Um, you can even add fireworks. You got many templates. I'm starting to understand that it's starting from the middle and then you have to move around it. And then what if I add a planet, for example? What happens? There you go. So you can clearly see if I move around, it's doing a very good job going behind the bridge. That's amazing because you have to understand you can do the same thing in Photoshop, but man, it takes forever. No matter how skilled you are, this is time consuming, my friend. I'm telling you. So from that perspective, it's doing a very good job. Check this out. If I even go behind, behind that little hole there, you can see it too. So that's amazing, right? What if I change it to something more complicated? For example, if I add a space shuttle and move around it, you can see the tip of the space shuttle right behind the little bridge. That's good. So yeah, I'm not going to make this review way too long. Only reason why, because if you already have used Luminar 4, Luminar AI, I don't see any bigger change than the last one. Yes, I mean, everything has an automatic button. For example, if I go back to the essential and then click landscape, for instance, they all look the, look exactly the same as last time. Even black and white. Yeah, uh, honestly, don't see much, much of a change. Is it bad? Of course, it's not bad. But... If you are the first time Luminar user, of course, you don't actually have a choice. You cannot even buy the Luminar 4 anymore. You have to buy the Luminar AI. But but if this is the if you are thinking about upgrading from Luminar AI to Luminar Luminar 4 to Luminar AI, then stick with Luminar 4. I personally would recommend you not to upgrade. So this is me about Luminar AI kind of overall overview. If I have missed anything, please do comment below. Um, until then. See you next time. Bye-bye.